Nearly 2,000 people are hanging from heights, equivalent to a 20-story building to repair a mountain. After that, they built a road straight up to the sky. Then they operated a 110-ton machine to drill deep into the earth. What are they doing? This is a massive project that has made the world take notice. New Zealand's latest mega project, with a total cost of $365 million, and taking more than 10 years before the results are known. Let's dive into today's documentary to see how they accomplished these seemingly impossible tasks. Open a map of New Zealand's North Island, and look west. Taranaki is as compact as the state of Rhode Island, but it's always among the leaders in income with a per capita GDP of over $50,000. Yes, a region just a fraction the size of New England is the offshore oil and gas capital of the country. Not only that, Taranaki is also the number one dairy hub exporting nearly $1.1 billion in milk each year, plus timber and offshore oil and gas that send energy all over the world. Head north and you'll find Waikato and Auckland, the economic heart of New Zealand. Auckland alone contributes more than $95 billion, nearly a third of the country's GDP, meaning just one city's economy rivals that of the entire state of Oregon. Waikato plays the crucial role of factory and energy center, providing food, electricity, and heavy industry for the whole North Island. Connecting these two wealthy regions is State Highway 3, the 213-mile main artery. It carries 75 million tons of goods each year and links the cultural land of the Ngati Tama Iwi, crossing traditional Maori Marae villages. For over a century, SH3 has bridged Maori and European communities. But let's stop at Mount Messenger, a treacherous mountain pass, right on this route. In 1914, the first surveyors risked their lives to carve a path through the Taranaki Forest. Just two years later, dynamite blasts opened the first road, and by 1923, the road through Aino Gorge was considered a marvel. Back then, it was enough for horse-drawn carriages and Ford Model Ts. But now, a road built for the 1920s is carrying convoys of 40-ton trucks loaded with milk timber and oil worth millions of dollars. What happens when you put hundreds of tons of steel and milk on a road built on Papa Mudstone, a soft rock that crumbles like wet chalk? The answer constant landslides. This is New Zealand's fear. Every rainstorm, every sharp curve becomes a trap where trucks crawl slowly through thick fog. Sometimes the entire SH3 is blocked for hours, even days. Goods rot in the truck's export contracts are broken. Sound familiar? It's like if a section of I-95 in the U.S. collapsed, the whole East Coast supply chain would freeze. No matter how many times they patch it, it's like putting tape over a giant crack. This pass can't be saved anymore. After admitting the old road had reached its limit, the New Zealand government faced a choice it couldn't delay. Then a historic decision was made to build a completely new 3.7-mile bypass called the Road of Dawn. That name is more than just a transportation project. It's a symbol of hope for a new era for Taranaki and the entire North Island. But getting to this decision was far from simple. Engineers, planners, and Ngati Tama Iwi representatives sat together for months considering 24 different route options. Some would have been faster and cheaper, but would have cut through native forests or destroyed the sacred Mimi wetland. In the end, they chose the least damaging route starting from Arudi in the south, crossing the Perininihi Range and reconnecting with SH3 near Ahititi in the north, just 3.7 miles, but enough to bypass the dangerous Mount Messenger Pass entirely. This is a massive undertaking. About 350 engineers, workers, and environmental experts were mobilized along with hundreds of heavy machines, 110-ton excavators, super-sized trucks, 165-foot cranes, and New Zealand's first industrial cableway system. The first mind-blowing task moved 1.26 million cubic yards of earth and rock, then fill back in 1.16 million cubic yards enough to fill 360 Olympic-sized swimming pools, or stack up a dirt tower twice as tall as the Empire State Building. Of course, this wasn't easy. From the moment the idea was proposed in 2016, it sparked fierce debate. At first, the budget was about $55 million, but by 2025, the number had soared to over $225 million, four times the original amount. 
To put it in perspective, it's like buying a house for $300,000, but after nine years and countless extra costs, you end up paying over $1.2 million. Why did this happen? Partly because of global construction inflation after the pandemic, which sent material and labor costs skyrocketing. But the main reason was prolonged legal battles. A prime example is the Pasco family farmers, whose land lay right in the project's path. They fiercely opposed it, saying they were being forced to sacrifice their property for the national interest. At the same time, environmental groups spoke out, accusing the government of illegally granting permits that allowed the destruction of protected animals, like bats and rare lizards, in exchange for planting forests elsewhere. To them, it was like buying and selling nature's life. But regardless, once the government decided, the project couldn't be canceled because of these reactions. And when construction began, the engineers knew the biggest challenge wasn't tunneling through mountains or building bridges over valleys. It was conquering the sheer cliffs up to 200 feet high, the equivalent of a 20-story building. One mistake could be deadly. To deal with this, they came up with a bold two-part solution. First, the entire cliff face was covered with massive steel mesh, like a giant safety net ready to catch any falling rocks. But that wasn't enough. Workers had to hang from cables, drill deep holes into the earth, and insert long steel rods called soil nails. These were then filled with cement, essentially stitching the mountainside together. And that's not all. After drilling, they pulled huge steel mesh sheets over the slopes like nature's own safety net ready to catch any landslide. Each mesh sheet weighs several tons, lifted high and stretched tight against the cliff, every steel hook ringing out like a drum. Once the cliffs were stitched up, the team faced an even tougher challenge, how to get heavy equipment and hundreds of tons of materials into a deep valley covered by untouched forest where no access road was allowed. Any temporary road would tear through rare trees the project had promised to protect. So what did they do? They built a road in the sky. Yes, you heard right, a road never before seen in New Zealand's road building history. In the center of the valley, they erected a 92-foot steel tower, the height of a nine-story building amidst fierce winds and thick fog. From here, two 2.4-inch thick steel cables as thick as an adult's wrist stretched 2,000 feet north and 1,600 feet south hanging like two giant swords in the sky. Can you imagine each time it runs? This cableway carries up to 44,000 pounds, the weight of four adult elephants suspended more than 650 feet above the valley floor. On swaying cabins in the clouds, excavators concrete steel and even gondolas carrying workers are transported across the abyss. One strong gust of wind can turn the ride into a real thrill ride. After the road in the sky, the next challenge was drilling straight through Mount Messenger's Ridge, where the rock is soft, damp, and prone to collapse. This is the stage where many engineers have said, one mistake, and the whole mountain could swallow us. To do this, they brought in a 110-ton steel monster named Hinatup Paramonga, after the Maori god of mountains and cliffs. Can you picture it? This mechanical beast can chew through nearly 10 feet of earth and rock each day with a massive spinning cutter head like a spaceship drill. In front, a steel shovel catches all the mud and rocks. Behind a conveyor belt sends it straight to the dump trucks. The process is divided into two stages. First, excavate the top heading, then immediately reinforce it with a special sprayed concrete mixed with steel fibers and microfibers for fire resistance. If there's a fire, these fibers melt, creating escape paths for gases and preventing the concrete from exploding. Once the top is stable, they excavate the bench, expanding it into a giant tunnel, 43 feet wide and 30 feet high, big enough for the oversized trucks that the old road could never handle. Amazingly, this tunnel isn't just for people. Because it goes under the ridge instead of over it, it's become a natural wildlife corridor, allowing forest animals like kiwis and rare lizards to move freely above no longer cut off by traffic. Stepping out of the tunnel, the next challenge had engineers holding their breath. How to build a bridge across Mimi Wetland, a strictly protected 500-acre wetland, a treasure trove of rare water birds, and hundreds of native plant species. 
Their solution sounds like a daring gamble build a 410-foot steel bridge across the valley with no support columns touching the ground. Instead of sinking foundations into the swamp, they use slanted steel supports anchored deep into the solid mountainsides. Imagine a giant steel structure like an iron dragon stretching across the sky hanging only by tension and perfect precision. Each steel beam weighs over 88,000 pounds, the weight of an empty Boeing 737 hoisted high in the whistling sea wind. Yes, a steel structure weighing more than 3.3 million pounds suspended in the air not touching the ground. Each beam is up to 130 feet long and weighs over 176,000 pounds, the same as 20 African elephants lifted nearly 165 feet high. Besides the main bridge, they built a 98-foot auxiliary bridge using Super T-Beam's huge precast concrete blocks. Each beam is nearly 100 feet long, weighs almost 154,000 pounds, transported by super-sized trucks, and installed in just a few hours, as quick as snapping together giant Lego pieces. From everything we've explored in today's documentary, do you think this is just a transportation project to boost the economy? The reality is the opposite. From day one, the Road of Dawn has carried a promise to protect nature and respect local culture. First is the effort to control invasive species across 9,000 acres of untouched forest, almost 14 square miles, three times the size of all of Central Park in New York. Thousands of automatic traps have been set throughout the forest to eliminate possum stoats and rats predators that once devastated native bird populations. In the first year alone, the conservation team removed more than 10,000 rodents, sharply reducing the extinction risk for many rare birds. Especially the kiwi, the national symbol of New Zealand, is treated like a VIP. Their eggs are collected and hatched in safe zones before being released back into the wild. To date, 29 young kiwis have been re-released each fitted with a tracker to ensure the highest survival rate. Nearly 2,000 workers have participated in cultural induction at Mari Marai villages to learn local customs, rituals, and history. Every workday is monitored by Maori cultural monitors to ensure not an inch of sacred land is disturbed. In addition, a historic agreement was signed. The Ngati Tama Iwi gave up 50 acres for the road in exchange for 300 acres of coastal land and the right to restore their ancestral lands, a true win-win deal. To date, more than 70% of the project is complete from bridges and tunnels to landslide protection and the cableway system. The whole route is expected to open by the end of 2026, providing a safe, stable, palm and fuel-efficient road for thousands of trucks every day. When finished, Te Ara o Te Ata will not only shorten travel time on State Highway 3, but also reduce landslide risks and save millions of dollars in transportation costs each year. More importantly, it will become a global symbol proof that a mega infrastructure project can be both powerful and gentle driving economic growth while protecting nature and culture. What do you think about this massive project? Could this be the model for the future of transportation where modern engineering harmonizes with nature? Leave a comment and don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss more spectacular and inspiring infrastructure stories.